The Word of God today has, gives us some insight into our Italian culture and the characteristics of our people. In the first, the characteristic of self-respect and righteous pride is always balanced in our culture by dignity. And on the other hand, there's a certain modesty, a humility, and an uncompromising understanding of their own position in life. This characterizes, I think, our Italian culture and certainly our Italian-American culture. The first reading today from the first letter to the Corinthians emphasizes the fact that each one of us is a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells within us. Paul goes on to say, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. And it is certainly understandable that as he goes on, he says, the, the proud are caught in their own traps. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, but they are vain. And in the gospel, we heard the parable of the invited guest who was told, don't take the first place because somebody more important than you may come. Take the last place and then you will be brought up higher. And at the end, we hear when we have a banquet, invite those who cannot repay you. I think these characteristics of our national and scriptural characteristics today help us to celebrate properly Columbus Day, a day for which Italian Americans take righteous pride. Columbus was an Italian born explorer who had the courage to believe that the world was round and so he discovered a new continent. No matter what historical revisionism we exist today, Columbus truly began the evangelization of the newly found American continent. He was a religious man, and many of the ills attributed to him are a result of historical misreinterpretation. And when the first Italian immigrants came in large numbers at the beginning of the 19th century, there was little they had to be proud of. They were mostly poor, some were illiterate, and they were relegated to menial jobs. But when they came to the land that Cristoforo Colombo discovered, they had pride in that. And we know that the statues that adorn our city, in our own Columbus Circle, was not made by rich people, but by the collections that immigrants took so that they could properly honor Columbus, something they could be proud of in keeping his memory alive. Yes, there was a righteous pride that characterizes our culture, while at the same time we recognize our humble status. The history of the great migration of the Italians to the United States has much to offer us by way of comparison to the migrations we experience today, right here in New York City. We see busloads coming every day, poor people who are escaping either poverty, sometimes persecution. Yes, they come with the same motivation that our ancestors came. They come to give a better life to their children. How important it is that we see them as new Americans and that we have to change our laws so that we can say they've come legally. So many people say, oh, my ancestors came legally. The trouble is that everyone could come legally before 1922 when they excluded the Southern and Eastern Europeans. After that, hardly anybody came except the Northern Europeans. So historically, we have to recognize that illegality is not the best characteristic of a migrant. We look today and we recognize that the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor has taken on a new function. Emma Lazarus in her poem, Give Me Your Tired, Your Poor, Your Huddled Masses, Yearning to Be Breed Free, takes new meaning today. As we see young people coming, busloads that, that came by plane and just the other day brought here to, the, to New, York, New York City. It's so difficult for us to imagine that our ancestors had somewhat the same problems, different but somewhat the same. 
Today, we can be proud of two of our Italian-born saints whom, of whom we honor today. These two saints understood the problems and the challenges of Italian migration to, in, the, in the last two centuries. Yes, they were the first to recognize that people needed not only pastoral care, but also social assistance. The first we honor today is St. Francis Cabrini. On the day of her canonization by Pope Pius XII, she was given the title Mother of Immigrants. Her life and her work was fascinating because she did so much and she began right here in New York City. She was not only the tireless mother to Italian immigrants, but also helped anyone who was in need. I recently previewed a full-length movie about her life, all here in New York City, to be released sometime in the spring. How important it is that we know our history so we don't repeat the same mistakes in the past. There's an adage that saints beget saints. And so it is that we have another Italian saint, canonized only yesterday, Bishop Giovanni Battista Scalabrini. We call them the two Brinis, Scalabrini and Cabrini. We, they come to us as our heroes because they understood what perhaps others did not understand about the phenomenon of migration. When St. John Paul II canonized, beatified Scalabrini, he gave him the title Father of Migrants. So we have on one hand Cabrini, the mother of migrants, and Scalabrini, the father of migrants, all because these two Italians understood something that other people seemed to miss at that time. Cardinal Silvano Tomasi, well known here in New York, has recently published a book that gives all the correspondence between the two of them because they collaborated in their work for migrants and how important it was that they understood each other in a way that saints only can know one another. They were selfless and their devotion was so important. In my work with migrants begun when I was a young priest, I had many opportunities to see what was happening as migrants come. The story is the same, the same difficulties everyone has to uh, overcome. Well, let me tell you a story that happened to me as a young priest in 1970s when I was in Jersey City here right across the river. I took a group of Italian women who had formed a society called the Cabrini Society. And they went, first we went to uh, Ellis Island and then the Statue of Liberty. And we took the boat actually from the Jersey City side because, you know, uh, both of these monuments are on the Jersey side of the river. Don't forget that. So we boarded the boat, we went to Ellis Island, and they recognized and they talked about it how difficult it was for the early immigrants to come. They had to be quarantined, they had to be uh, examined physically. For them, it was a little easier. They came by plane, so they never had uh, been at Ellis Island. Then when we got to the Statue of Liberty, one of the women, as soon as we disembarked, came to me and said, Padre, che madonna è questa? I said, oh, la madonna libertà. The woman asked me, what Madonna is this? I said, the Our Lady of Liberty. I couldn't say anything else. And everybody knelt down and they said the rosary, probably the first group rosary on, on, on the Statue of Liberty Island. Because they saw the world differently, everything was holy in some way. And that statue looks like a Madonna. Yes, Our Lady of Liberty really can inspire us to understand what this country is about and how it was begun. Some people today, as they come to the United States, maybe they, can, they come for various reasons, but the same reasons that happened in the past, nothing different, the same aspirations, the same difficulties, and the same progress, except today that we are able to incorporate our, our new immigrants much faster. 
I work with the immigrants from Italy who came after 1965 when the law changed, allowing more Italians to come. And today it reminds me of the DACA, the Dreamers, who also were, came as infants, most of them, and have made tremendous progress. When I look back at my work in Jersey City, I followed some of those families from the first day of their arrival. And I see now today they have become doctors, lawyers, teachers, all kinds of helping professions in one generation, which took us two and three generations in the past. America is able today to integrate people much more quickly, thanks be to God, and our new and the culture that does help the integration. We need to understand the past so that we can look to the future and understand that these modern-day immigrants leave for the very same reasons that our ancestors left. How important it is that we have an understanding of the land, the land in which we live. Bishop Scalabrini, Saint Scalabrini now, he said this once, la patria e la terra chi li da il pane. Your country, your homeland is where they give you bread, where they give you work. He understood, but he also said, don't ever forget your homeland, but love the land that gives you a place to live. And it is the same for the new immigrants, they understand where they came from, and they hang on to some things that are much more easily today than the old immigrants. But they become citizens. Mother Cabrini became the first American citizen to be canonized. Yes, we understood the genius of these two great heroes and a heroine. How important they were to our history. And so we understand today that we must give our help to those who come. We should be the first as Italian Americans to understand what is going on here and that we need to welcome those who come. Yes, we need a political change so that the laws really favor those who need to come. But unfortunately, we're in gridlock right now. And let's hope and pray that we can look, get to that day when we can establish the right kind of systems. We suffered for more than 50 years as Italians, Italian Americans, with an unjust immigration law. And the law as we have it today is still not really just in order to help our country the way we need it to be. And so we must learn from our history. We must learn from these two great saints that we must give ourselves to them as as migrants, as we ourselves were welcomed in some way. Sometimes we were not welcomed, but who cares? Let's, where we are today, we can welcome others. Let me tell you just one incident happened the other day. We're at Cipriani's beautiful place. We had a, a fundraiser for Catholic Charities. And Monsignor Pinto, the director of Catholic Charities, got up and said, you know, yesterday I was coming out of the church there near Catholic Charities where they're dropped off actually and a woman was there with her son. The son was there in a t-shirt and shorts and flip-flops. And Monsignor understood enough Spanish that she said, I need a coat for my son. And he mentioned that at the dinner. An Italian-American, before the dinner was over, said, I will give you 200 coats next week. That's the kind of understanding of our heritage that we need to have, that we will be able to come to the aid of those who are in need, just as at, in the past, maybe we were helped, maybe we're not helped, but we've learned something along the way of what it means to be an American, and we are proud today of our two saints and of Columbus also. God bless you. There you go. Bravo. Bravo.